So this video, we're going to talk about tug play or ball on a rope. So what I like to do is I like to start off with a tug first because you can establish uh, not only the proper targeting, but uh, you know, you got two handles on it versus one rope. And if you have a strong dog with a strong pulling, um, it's a lot di more difficult to handle that first. But I always start off, so let me tell you what tug play is great about. Tug play or any kind of toy interaction is a great relationship builder with the dog. <clears throat> so we, we want to teach the dog the proper rules as well as how to properly play. So <clears throat> a lot of dogs, not a lot of dogs, but some dogs don't have a lot of drive for a toy. So you got to work a lot longer to build that drive before you can actually play tug. What I'll tend to do with a dog that really doesn't want to come close to you or doesn't really know the, the game or doesn't have a lot of drive is I'll attach. <clears throat> Hi buddy. So I'll attach a leash, a six foot leash, a four foot or a 10 foot to the tug. And this way I can use just basic prey drive. And as you see right away, he, he grabs it. So this is like the third day I played with him. So I don't want you to think he's a brand new dog, but with, this is, uh, yeah, this is day three. So first, this is what I had to do with him, was just, okay, Cody, so we're not really on the out yet, so out, good, no, 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 sit, so it's going to be hard for him, so what I'll do is I'll just always make little jerky movements away from the dog to get him to chase, which is a natural prey drive for most dogs, and once I have it, it might take a couple of days, three days, four days, but once he actually bites with his mouth instead of using his paws, I'll build him up, good boy, good boy, and I want him to know that it's okay to bite this. So that's the first step I do, is to build up the desire to want it, to bite it, to put his mouth on, his teeth on it. <clears throat> so with Cody being a retriever, you know, they were bred for obviously a softer bite, meaning, you know, the, to retrieve whatever object they're trained for, duck, geese, whatever bird, and to bring it back without, you know, damaging the bird too much. So genetically, they don't have a, a hard grip like, we'll say, a German Shepherd. Normally, normally. Now, there's different dogs, but um, a German Shepherd, a Malinois, a Dutchie, uh, a Roddy, a Pit, any of the Mastiffs. I mean, they naturally, most dogs will have a harder grip, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need a hard grip because as desire and drive builds, the more you play with them and be clear about the game, <clears throat> You know the bite is good enough for whatever dog you have and again you're not gonna you're not yanking on it you're not pull, not for not for pet quality anyways i mean trainers when they start using tug for bite work and start teaching proper bite they may use a lot of force away from the dog to teach a harder grip or to hang on or hold on but that's not what we're doing here as you can see he's got a hard enough bite and i have plenty of desire for a drive for the tug so once i get it Again, I'll use a leash so I keep distance so the dog feels more comfortable. Uh, sorry, I just got to... Um, so when I have enough desire to want it and hold it, now I can move to slowly bringing him in closer to me so he's still comfortable biting. And that's why I like the two handles. You know, it's just an opinion. Some people like one handle, some people don't like any handles. But once I have a dog allowing me to be up close to him, now what I'll do is I'll play, and the movement, again, we want to always move away from them, and it's just little movement, either away from straight or sideways. And then what I do, so let me just back up, out. So what I want all, no, 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 out, sit, no, sit, good sit. So what I want to do is I always want to have a leash on them when I'm playing, and the re, no, no, and the reason for the leash is because as we start teaching the rules, we want to be clear with them how the game is played. The game is played is that we go back and forth. I win, he wins, I win, he wins. When I let him win, it's when he's got a good strong grip and he's trying to pull away. So once I release the tug or the ball, and once I do that, I have the leash connected to his collar, preferably if you're using a prong, not on a prong. I don't like to, I have him on a fur saver. So, <clears throat> Stay right there, buddy. You big gooba. <laughs> yeah, right, big gooba. 
Come on, bud, you gotta help me up. So once I have him on a leash and a collar, and again, this is a fur saver, it's lightweight, doesn't damage the coat. The reason why I have the, the leash, come on, get up, bud. Come on, get up, don't, don't uh, get all tangled up. Come on, bud. So, as you can see, he's in drive now. He saw the toy, he wants it, he's, he's a little out of control, he's not so calm. So once I have the leash on, and I have good energy and good bite, and he wants to play with me, yes! So I use his marker, his marker is yes, meaning it's not only a marker saying you did right, but also that it's a release marker for him. So once I have good play like this, where he, he's got a good grip and he's pulling, I'm gonna release it, and I let him win, but now I use the leash because a lot of dogs will take off with it, possessiveness. So what I do is I just kind of bring him in slowly. I bring him in, bring him in, and then I, come on, I bring him in. Now I grab the uh, tug or the ball, and now I start again. All right, good boy, yeah. All right, good boy. Now what I do is it's give and take. Like I said, he's playing good. And not, next time he pulls, I'm gonna let him win. Good boy. Now I just turn away from the circle, and I slowly bring the leash in. Come on, come on. Now tell him, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, and I bring him back in, I grab the tug, and I play again. So that's going from a leash attached, build and drive. It may take days, it may take weeks. Some dogs just take a long time to build it, but it can be done. I've worked with some dogs that have no toy drive at all, and seven, eight, nine, ten days down the road, all of a sudden they bite it, and it's like a big thing. They feel comfortable, and then slowly I build up so that I can now... <clears throat> Now bring him in closer and play with him, short sessions. So once I have that set with the dog, clearly understands that the game is just between me and him, and I got good energy, then I let him win. And again, I use the leash, not corrected him. I just slowly reel him in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, so he released it, so now some dogs will release it, and you're just gonna have to work on it and just take some time. time. He usually doesn't drop it. So I'll start the game again. I'll make a couple of misses. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't know what happened. Oh, Jody, can you please, because uh, I'm taping something, can you please go on the other side because he's interested in you, please. Attaboy. Attaboy. All right. Come on. Yeah. So now I lost I lost uh, his energy and his him wanting to play with me because he heard my wife and he loves my wife. So now he's more concentrated on her on the other side of the fence. So now i got to try to get him back. Can I just make moving away? And then I let him play. All right, good boy. Yeah, good boy. All right, good boy. And at that point, again, what a oh, good energy. I let him win. And then I just let him, it's his prize. It's his prize. Let him win. Let him carry it. Oh, boy. Okay, come on, come on, come on. And then I grab the, the uh, tug. Or again, if you use a ball. And I start again. Again, going away from him. Keeping him, hopefully, biting. Keeping a grip on it. And again, I'm not trained a personal protection dog, so I'm not worried about his grip. I'm just worried about him, or just wanting him to learn the rules of the game. And once the rules are established, then I can start teaching it out. Ah, good boy! That's a good boy! That's a good boy! Come on! So I don't know if I'm too close, and if you missed a lot... Come on, pick it up, pick it up! Come on, come on, come on! Yeah! Come on, come on! Jump up, bring the gun back, or the ball back. I don't really want to do that with him because we're, we're trying to work on him not jumping. So right now I, I'm not really wanting to jump and bring it right back to me. So now we have, it might be a few days, it might be a few sessions, whatever it is. Then to teach the out, I just bring him close. I use my leg. I stop all movement. I just say, out, uh-uh, out. Once he releases, I mock it, yes. And then I just move away and let him re-engage. Yes, <laughs> that boy, that boy. Again, going to the out, I use my leg, I stop all movement, so he released it. I'm not going to say yes or anything because I want him to go on my on my cue, my verbal cue. Out, yes. And that might be, again, it all depends on the dog. He may pick it up quick. He may pick it up quick. He may take a few sessions. Whatever it is, I just try to keep it short so I keep him always wanting to be playing, not getting tired. And over and over. And then once I got a good out, come on, come on, come on. So he's getting tired. He's losing his grip quick. He's giving up. 
Oh, yes, once I have that established and I have it clear out, then I'll start using the tug as a reinforcement. Meaning, oh, uh-huh, oh, sit. Yes, so the minute he does it, as you can see, he's really tight. The minute he does the command, I'll mark it yes, and then I'll move away from him and let him re-engage. So the toy becomes the reinforcement instead of the food. Out, don't wake the leash, crazy dog. Out, uh -huh. out, down, nope, down. Yes, boy. So I'm gonna end it on there, because again, he's just getting tired now and he's not really playing. I don't want to set bad examples. Out, nope, out, sit, all done. So some of the rules we want to establish before I start playing tug, I like to say something to let them know we're going to be playing. So it's always the same word or words. Ready to work, want to play, uh, whatever you want. So I'll say it a couple of times and I'll get right into building the drive. So if you're on the pot with the leash, just trying to get uh, drive to want it, I mean, same thing, you would say, you ready to work, ready to work, and just play like a rabbit. Think of a rabbit running away from a dog and getting the dog to chase it. So it's just little jerky movements away. And once you know the dog has a good bite and wants the tug to be in his mouth instead of pawing at it or know, knowing what to do, again, may take a few days, a couple of sessions, may take a week. All dogs are different. Then you can start to um, hold on to the tug of the ball. The reason why I like a tug first and my preference is two handles but I like a tug better because his ability to set up the bite to what we want him to do the rules of engagement we it's clearer and it's easier for him to target the tug instead of hands or handles or whatever with a ball it's just a rope and the ball and a lot of dogs if you start off with it have a difficult time targeting the ball they'll go towards the string because it's the easier it's easier for them to hold on to so if I can set up and teach him the rules of the game with a tug then I can go over and switch over to the ball it's a little easier my experience it's easier to then teach the targeting of the ball uh, the ball's nice because you can also toss it as a reward and get more exercise but you see what happened uh, was that three minutes four minutes and probably halfway through that, he was already getting tired. So it's not only good mental exercise, but it's good physical exercise. Tug, it's a great relationship builder. And it's, a, it's another piece to using one of our primary reinforcers. And I go over it all the time. Thanks to my buddy, Chris Fraze. I, I like to say uh, one of the three T's or three T's of reinforcement. Just remember three T's are, are reinforcing whatever behavior you give one of those after that behavior, the likelihood of that behavior continuing is a lot greater than not giving a reinforcer. So one of the three T's is a tug, a toy. It could be a ball, it could be a soft, uh, I don't know, soft animal, um, not an animal, but uh, a toy animal. I, you know, I can think of like little squirrels with the fur and it's soft. Some of them have squeakies in it. <clears throat> So a tug of ball, that's one of the reinforcers, meaning a toy. Then we have treats, food, that's another reinforcer. And uh, the other one is touch, praise, you know, touch slash praise. So this is just another addition to your toolbox as a reinforcer. And again, it's a great relationship builder when you clearly, clearly teach the dog the rules of the game. The rules are, is it's my toy at all times. It only comes out when we're playing. Uh, the other thing is uh, we want to, I like to add words, two words maybe, three words, are you ready to work, you want to work, you want to play, and say that all the time. And then once you have the drive to want it, then you can start playing tug. And the movements of the tug, not at them, you don't ever want to push it at them because it, it tends to put the dog in defense or not comfortable. <clears throat> and, it, and once you have him and he's got a good grip, the movements are this way little pops back and forth and think again of that rabbit if you've seen it on TV a dog catches a rabbit or you've seen it in, in real life most dogs are gonna chew and kill it and as the rabbit is screaming sadly I've witnessed it when this rabbit screaming and trying to get away from his mouth the dog has more energy 
the minute the rabbit stops screaming is more likely dead and gives up most dogs just drop it and move on some dogs eat it but uh so think of that the tug is is something think of that movement back and forth little tugs don't overwhelm them if you have a puppy and you don't know what you're doing you're just starting and the puppy's teething don't play tug at all uh, most people that have experience know that you can still play tug when a teething puppy but you're not going to play hard because you don't want the dog to associate pain with the game um, so then once you have good play always have the leash on the dog and once you have an interaction he's pulling you're pulling he's pulling you're pulling then you can let the tug go let him win because we want the dog to win too the leash is just to keep him from running off until we teach him that the game is always once you win come back to me we play again so i like to just circle with them some dogs like a oh, proud like yeah i got it i won and then slowly bring him in and reach down for the tug and then keep playing again and when you have a couple of sessions in three four five sessions again when the dog clearly understands that then you can start moving to teaching the out and all i do is remember the rabbit i just said is screaming trying to get out of the dog's mouth think about when the rabbit's dead and the dog gives up that prize you want to do the same thing with the tug or the ball just stop movement so i i like to bend down a little bit use my leg to keep it from moving some dogs with a lot of drive will continue to try to tug 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 i just say no out no out and once he outs the second he outs use your marker or you click him well it's hard to do click and play tug but i'm sure you can then i just move backwards and let him re-engage play 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 let him win bring him back into you again stop all movement he may still tug it but at some point he'll give up but we just use that to mark it yes so he's here out 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 then mark yes when he releases it start again so once you have a good out then you can move to using it as a reinforcer for your obedience that you've already taught him with food a sit a down go into a place command uh, a heal command uh, you can reward off a good heal you can re again anything you would use food you just replace it with this which you saw how quick he was tired i don't know two minutes i'd have to watch the tape again so then you can add and build up the duration of the play gives him better stamina it's a great game between you and him uh, i'm sure i forgot some things again the toy only comes out when you're playing with him it's not to be left out for him just to have because you want it to be associated with your game with him you start it ready to work ready to work build drive then start playing tug uh, then teach the out and once you have a good out and good play then oh, and again leash on so that once you let him win he's taught to bring it back to you mark it when he brings it back to you and start again and then once you have that in play then you can start using it as a reinforcer for your obedience and have a great game with him and then when i'm ready i want to i want to end before he got as tight as he was because i don't want sloppy play i want him to always feel successful uh, i want him to always feel that uh, he's in charge but really i am uh, so i want to slowly build that duration and then ultimately when it's done i just say all done just like to start it i'll say want to play and i put it away and he doesn't get it after that and the game's over and done with so hopefully uh, again golden retriever third day playing tug and uh let me go get a ball so i can show you a ball on the street come on cody come on Sorry for the wait, but I figured I'd show it to you. Sit. Down. Nope. Down. Good. 
So 10 inch tug with two handles. They also come with one handle. Uh, they'll come with no handles. Starting off, I probably go with uh, like French linen. It's soft fabric. Uh, it's it's uh, more comfortable for a dog when they first start. Then you can go up to harder objects to teach a better bite if you're doing bite work for sport or something like that. I'm not going to get into that. Again, 10 inch, two handles. I like starting it and I like two handles. When you go to a ball on a string, a ball on a rope, here's a couple of choices. So this one has a little plastic handle. Um, it's got little ridges to it. It's a little harder so, and it's, it's big. So it's for a big dog with more experience. And this one's a little softer. And again, it has little ridges. This was, uh, both of these were fins balls. You like this one best. Um, so when I was explaining earlier about it's harder to teach the, the strike or the bite on the ball, because what ha tends to happen is it moves around. It's not as stable as having your hand, both hands on a tug. So what happens is when the dog's targeting the ball, a lot of times they're going for the rope or they miss it and they get the rope. And it's just, I find for me, it's just a little more difficult to teach with ball on the rope or ball on the string at first. So I like to go with a tug first. And then once I have good striking and I got the game, uh, the game with him, he's clear, he knows the rules, he understands how to play. Then I can transfer over this. Cause what's nice about the ball, and again, three days, he's not a working dog. His stamina is very low. Uh, so, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't be worried about tossing the ball, but what's nice about this is that, you know, you can get good run out of it when you got a dog that's high energy and has a lot more stamina. Because as you're playing with him here and there, and you know that he comes back and you've got a good recall, then you can really toss the ball 50, 60 yards out, get him to run, bring it back. You can play again, tug. And you would do the same thing, you know? You would move it, you know, he's trying to strike, build up the drive, then you let him bite it. And then you're playing tug. And again, it's a little bit more difficult now. With something like this, just with a knot, I'm gonna probably use lightweight mechanic gloves that I like. With this, it's a little easier on the hand because you have the little handle. Uh, so, you know, those are your choices. Uh, hopefully I, I explained it. I didn't go off an outline. I just went through my head on how I teach and how I was taught. So those are your options. Hopefully you enjoyed watching Cody uh, playing tug. He's, I think he's doing very well for our third day. You know, we got to work more on the out, obviously, so it's clear and the outs right away. Um, that out goes on to everything else too because when you teach the out here then if you see him trying to eat something off the ground or he shouldn't be eating something in the house you know it's it's easier to say out because he's learned that under the more drive the more distraction his mind want to play and you teach him the out it's clearer then you know again if you're in the house and you tell him out because you try to pick up or jump up and try to grab your feet or something like that so those, uh, hopefully that was clear. Hopefully you enjoyed watching Cody. And when we get a little bit more advanced, I'll probably throw up another video. All right, buddy. Okay. So with that, uh, please subscribe to my channel if you don't mind. Also, if you could like it and maybe make a comment whether you liked it or you didn't like it or anything, it all helps. It all helps to, for me to try to grow my channel. And I appreciate your time watching my video. Thanks and have a great weekend. Happy Father's Day in a couple of days to all you fathers out there.